The Mau Mau Rebellion, Bloody History of Kenya Conflict The Mau Mau Rebellion was a bloody revolt against the British colonial rule in Kenya. The Mau Mau Uprising began in 1952 as a reaction to inequalities and injustices in British-controlled Kenya. The response of the colonial administration was a fierce crackdown on the rebels, resulting in many deaths. By 1956, the uprising had effectively been crushed, but the extent of opposition to the British regime had clearly been demonstrated, and Kenya was set on the path to independence, which was finally achieved in 1963. Before we go deeply into the bloody history of Kenya's conflict, if you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Background the British colonial presence in Kenya began in the late 19th century as part of a trend of seizure of territory across the African continent by European nations that became known as the Scramble for Africa. The region today known as Kenya had previously been under the control of the Sultan of Zanzibar, but pressure from Britain and its military had forced the Sultan to hand over the territory to the British Empire as well as neighboring Tanganyika to Germany. Agreements over the region's claims by the Europeans were negotiated in the 1884-85 Berlin Conference, with the British gaining control over most of the East African coast. From around 1890, the British began to move inland, hoping to gain access to the fertile highlands and provide greater security for Uganda, which had also been claimed as a British colony. In order to facilitate this, a railway line from Mombasa to Kisumu was built using Indian workers and British forces were sent to suppress any resistance from the ethnic groups living in the central highlands, predominantly the Maasai, the Kikuyu and the Kamba. These actions were also undertaken to elevate collaborators, Africans willing to cooperate with the British to positions of power. This campaign of pacification combined with the famine and disease that swept the region during this period resulted in a significant loss of life and property amongst the indigenous people. A policy of reallocation was undertaken, expropriating fertile land from locals in order to give it to white farmers who mostly moved from Britain or South Africa. This process marks the start of a pattern that would define relations between Europeans and indigenous Kenyans for the first half of the 20th century. After the end of the Second World War, the discontentment amongst African Kenyans was intensified by the lack of progress. Hundreds of thousands of Kenyans lived in poverty in the slums around Nairobi, with little chance of employment or basic social justice. In comparison, most of the white Europeans and many of the Indians who had settled in Nairobi enjoyed a conspicuous life of wealth and frequently treated indigenous Africans with hostility and contempt. A similar state of affairs existed in rural areas, where 3,000 European families owned more land than the 1 million Kikuyu driven into reserves. This situation, the culmination of decades of mistreatment and oppression under British rule, created an atmosphere of discontentment that fed into various Kenyan nationalist movements and ultimately led to the Mau Mau Uprising. The Uprising A few years earlier, a local movement had started revolting against the British colonial administration, which had ruled the area ever since 1895. The movement mainly comprised Kikuyus, Kenya's largest native tribe, many of whom had been pushed off their fertile lands into central Kenya by the European settlers. Along with other tribes, the Kikuyus had been forced to live in ethnic reserves that were too small for them and required to possess a special permit to move around the country. Many ended up as cheap laborers on white-owned farms in what had become known as the White Highlands. Many of their European masters were young upper-class British officers who had resettled there after World War I. Others had arrived from South Africa and British-administered Rhodesia. Most enjoyed a life of luxury on their large seven-staffed estates, 
But by 1948, growing unrest on the farms had alerted the colonial government to the existence of the so-called Mau Mau movement, which it subsequently banned in 1950. But just two years later, violence erupted as rebels began attacking farms and killing Africans they considered to be supporting the regime. The rebels called themselves the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army. Their aim was to end colonial rule. It was the British who called them the Mau Mau, a term whose origins and meanings is still being discussed today. The Mau Mau were said to be united by a secret Kikuyu oath that involved drinking blood and even eating human flesh. In October 1952, senior chief Waru Hyu, a prominent collaborator and the harshest critic of the Mau Mau among the Kikuyu chiefs, was assassinated near Nairobi. His death prompted celebration amongst Mau Mau supporters and consternation in government. The administration finally realized that the Mau Mau posed a serious threat to colonial rule in Kenya and the decision was taken to actively challenge and engage the rebels. When the rebels started killing Europeans too, the newly appointed governor, Sir Evelyn Baring, declared a state of emergency in the colony. It was October 1952 and the war against the Mau Mau had officially begun. The colonial authorities struck swiftly and intending to thwart the rebellion at its very beginning, arrested around 180 people, among them Jomo Kenyatta, the leader of the Kenyan African Union, a predominantly Kikuyu political organization. But the actual leaders of the guerrillas, who like Daydan Kimathi came from the most radical wing of the cow, had already escaped into the forest from where they would continue their fight. The rebels possessed few firearms, so they used spears and machetes. When they killed, they left the bodies torn to pieces. Living in the bush, they grew disheveled, with long hair or dreadlocks, and some even wore animal skins. The fact that they mostly killed other Africans enabled the administration to frame the conflict as inter kenyan one that the authorities were obliged to pacify. But that is not true. The truth is, the Mau Mau was a mass movement that was organized to liberate Kenya from colonial domination, says Gitu Wakahangeri, the Secretary General of the Mau Mau War Veterans Association. We went on and on and on. We did not want to leave the struggle until the British came to understand that this country belongs to the Kenyan Africans, he said. Back then, while the regime soldiers fought the guerrillas, the colonial government also conducted a campaign of mass arrest. Almost anybody even slightly suspected of belonging to the Mau Mau was arrested and taken to a detention camp or prison, where they were then interrogated and often tortured and abused. Many women, like Naomi, were raped with glass bottles. Many men, like Kimweli, were castrated with pliers. Few prisoners were even brought before a court of law. They were classified according to how dangerous they were perceived to be and they were continually moved from one camp or prison to another until they were considered safe to be sent to a reserve. As the war dragged on, the administration started relocating a large part of the native population into what it dubbed protected villages. These were surrounded by barbed wire, guarded by soldiers, and resembled the detention camps in everything but the name. The villages also served the purpose of cutting off the local support to the guerrillas. Conditions in both the camps and villages were very harsh. Violence, sickness, and hunger were rife. The uprising escalated further on March 26, when Mau Mau fighters carried out two major attacks. The first was an assault on the Naivasha police station, which resulted in a humiliating defeat for the police and the release of 173 prisoners, many of them Mau Mau, from an adjacent detention camp. The second was the massacre of Kikuyu loyalists at Lari, in which at least 97 Kenyans were killed. 
The incident was used by the government to further characterize the Mau Mau as brutal savages, and no official mention was made of a similar number of Mau Mau prisoners who were machine gunned to death by government troops in the Abedare forest. These attacks began on a pattern of Mau Mau raids against police and loyalists that continued throughout 1953. The gradual organization of the rebel forces in the forest created military units, although they were limited by a lack of weapons, supplies, and training. The rebellion proved to be much more difficult to deal with than the British had anticipated. The colonial government brought in 20,000 extra soldiers and used the British Royal Air Force to try to strike the rebels in the forest. In October 1956, the Mau Mau leader, Dedan Kimathi, was shot and captured, effectively signaling the end of the fighting in the bush. Kimathi was tried and sentenced to death. He was hanged in February the following year. Finally, in 1960, the state of emergency was lifted and the colonial regime filled the uprising away as just a savage conflict conducted mostly between Africans. However, the death toll of the conflict remains a source of dispute today. The Mau Mau killed around 1,800 Africans because of their supposed loyalty to the colonial regime and the further 32 European and 26 Asian civilians, according to figures compiled by David Anderson, a professor of African history at the University of Warwick in UK. According to the official figures, the rebels also killed some 200 colonial security forces during combat. But as most of them were Africans, not more than 100 Europeans died as a result of the uprising. In contrast, at least 11,000 rebels were killed by the regime, and historians such as Anderson calculate the number of Kenyan casualties to be at least 20,000 possibly more. The rebellion, however, had helped to accelerate the transition of power, as it had been happening in other European colonies. Three years later, in 1963, Kenya was declared independent. Its first government was led by Jomo Kenyatta, by then on friendly terms with the UK. The land which did not remain in British hands passed to Kenyans linked with Kenyatta's government. The new masters had little interest in bringing to light the wrongs committed by either side during the uprising or in recognizing the role played by the Mau Mau fighters. The Kenyan government did not remove the law banning the Mau Mau movement, and so the veterans remained barred from meeting and organizing themselves into any kind of association. Rewriting history Things suddenly changed in 2003. That year, the government of the newly elected Kenyan president, Mwai Kibaki, lifted the law that banned the Mau Mau. The veterans immediately began gathering to share their stories, and soon, the Mau Mau War Veterans Association was formed. Together with the Kenya Human Rights Commission, the veterans started working towards the possibility of bringing a lawsuit against the United Kingdom. The KHRC said it had documented 40 cases of sexual abuse, castration, and illegal detention. From those cases, the commission was finally able to present five Mau Mau veterans as claimants in mid-2009. As part of the research for the legal case, Professor Anderson made a startling discovery in 2010. He found out that the British government had indeed smuggled out of Kenya a huge number of official documents, which were still being kept secret in special premises. The judge for the case ordered the government to release this. Some 1,500 files recording Britain's past in Kenya surfaced, many of them documenting systematic abuses committed by the colonial regime during the uprising. More than 7,000 secret files were found in 36 other former British colonies. The British government argued that any legal responsibility for the Mau Mau case had passed on to the Kenyan government alongside with independence and that the fair trial was not possible after such a long time. The court denied both arguments, the first in April 2011 and the second in June 2012. 
Finally, the judge ruled that three of the Mau Mau claimants, Wambugu Wanyingi, Jane Muthuni Mara, and Paolo Mwakan Zeli had been tortured and abused by the colonial authorities. They could proceed with their case and sue the British government. The trial never happened, however. In June 2013, the British Foreign Secretary, William Hague, announced that Britain would pay roughly $31 million in cost and compensation to a total of 5,228 veterans represented by the British law firm Lay Day. We understand the pain and the grief felt by those who were involved in the events of emergency in Kenya. The British government recognizes that Kenyans were subjected to torture and other forms of ill treatment at the hands of the colonial administration, Haig said. He also insisted that his government still denied liability for the actions of the colonial administration in Kenya and added that it would defend any claims brought by other former British colonies. Thanks for watching. That was the bloody history of Kenya conflict. Which other country's history or deadly conflict do you want us to talk about? Please drop it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, and also share it with your friends.